belt line to Broadway. Belt line, oh my, helps get through the tough times. Broadway, hooray. Let's all tune in to belt line to Broadway. What do you say? You could binge any day. Listening to belt line to Broadway. Belt line to Broadway. This is the Beltline to Broadway podcast. On this episode, we're going to New York City and the Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS Broadway Flea Market and Grand Auction. Now, the Broadway Flea Market is a big day for theater fans, but this event is more than just about hunting for Broadway-themed treasures and hobnobbing with Broadway stars. Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS Communication Director Lane Bocamp tells me it is about supporting the life-saving programs and services Broadway Cares provides. I mean, this is the biggest day for Broadway fans regardless. If you love theater, you're out here. And what this money is going toward is actually providing meals and medication, health care and hope for people across the country. Um, all 50 states, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico. And we are the single largest financial supporter of all of the programs of the Entertainment Community Fund. So we're helping each other in the theater and entertainment community. So we're providing healthy meals. You're providing um, visits to a doctor. You're providing uh, rent assistance. Um, you're helping people get through really tough days, whether they're living with HIV and AIDS, whether they're struggling with COVID or facing other life-threatening illnesses. Um, everyone here is making a difference for, they're, they're paying it forward. Many of the Broadway shows set up tables of props, merchandise, and memorabilia, all to sell to benefit Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. I caught up with Anant Das, one of the co-producers of Kinky Boots and the highly anticipated The Piano Lesson to talk about the magic and timelessness of theater. Kinky Boots is special because I think for a lot of people, it's a show they've seen before. It's a show that's feel good. It brings energy. But seeing it now post-COVID in 2022, one, in an off-Broadway theater, 499 seats, it sounds better than ever. You are close, you are tight, it's a full-on concert. It is fabulous to get a Broadway production in that small space. But that message coming in this, you know, COVID's happened, we've had social justice protests, we've had a lot of people talking about the theater community, what we can do to be more accepting and more inclusive. And that message of inclusion is so important. And we've even updated some of the lines in Kinky Boots to be more inclusive. Because, you know, when the show came out in 2013, it's not where we are right now in 2022. So it's fabulous to see that show being updated. And then the piano lesson, that's such a special play. You know, first of all, the cast, amazing. Danielle Brooks, Samuel L. Jackson, John David Washington, directed by LaTanya, uh, LaTanya, uh, LaTanya Jackson, getting my names mixed up. Fabulous team put together. And it's just so cool because one Pulitzer Prize winning show, I believe from the late 70s, early 80s, uh, August Wilson, hasn't been done on Broadway since. So this is the first time. And Samuel L. Jackson was actually in the original production at Yale Rep. So he's back 30, 40 years later now. Um, and just seeing how he's going to take on a new role and having this Pulitzer Prize winning show where we are right now is just so powerful and such a great message. And so much has changed in the past 30, 40 years, but so much is still the same. And how do we take what's changed and still work on what hasn't changed to improve it moving forward? Now, I couldn't let Anant get away without talking to him about this year's Tony Award-winning musical and Pulitzer Prize winner, A Strange Loop. Anant is one of the investors on A Strange Loop and says the show made such an impact on him personally because it demonstrates the power of theater to teach empathy. I saw it in DC, um, the DC production. And I had the opportunity to come on as an investor in A Strange Loop. And when I got that opportunity, I asked myself, how could I say no to theater like this if this is what I want to see more of? It, it was no brainer for me. And I'm so happy to be involved with the production that way. James Jackson Jr. is an actor and musician who stars in A Strange Loop as Thought Two. James has been involved in the show since its DC premiere at Woolly Mammoth Theatre Company and spoke to me about the universality of the show. 
this is a very specific show. Yes. There's a lot of specificity. Yeah. But in its specificity, I found it to be so universal. Right. If you want to tell a very specific story, I think the one thing you can do is tell the absolute truth. Always find those places. Go back and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. But in, in, in the editing, find those places where you found yourself writing for someone else or maybe not telling the truth or kind of veering off away from the truth because you think the truth might be a little too much to or something. Or you think your story isn't important right. enough or that nobody if you will care. stick to the truth, everyone will recognize that and everyone will see themselves. It doesn't seem to make sense that just like, who cares about my little story or me telling this really specific thing that seems only important to me. If you do it truthfully, everyone will identify. And we see that happening every single night from the, from the stage. We're watching the audience receive this thing. We're watching people on the sidewalk coming in being like, this isn't for me. It says it's a big black queer ass American, that's not for me, but I'll go support. And they come out shocked. We see them in the audience. I, my favorite thing, and I say this all the time, I see in, in, the, in the audience, I'll see a row of people. Someone is pissed, sitting next to someone who's happy, sitting next to someone who's crying, sitting next to someone who's completely confused because they didn't get it. And they all came together. And they all have to like go home together or get on the subway together or go out for drinks after the show. But it's the transformational power of theater. Isn't that what theater does? That's why we all got into this in the first place. Because a bunch of people who didn't seem to fit somewhere got together and put on a little a show, a skit. They entertained the crowd and it felt really cool. That's the only reason we all got into this. And this show, I think, is the perfect example of that. As thought too... James manifests in the main character Usher's mind as several characters, including Harriet Tubman. Here James talks to me about the significance of using the elders to amplify a strange loop's message. People have brought up certain of, of the ancestors in the, the black community uh, for years for different reasons. I think it's really cool to use that they're being used in this particular scene to hold up this idea of what a Tyler Perry could create. I think there's room for everybody in the the Broadway community, in, the, in a theater world. I think there's room for everybody to tell their story however they want to. And Usher is just trying to tell his particular story, maybe differently than Tyler Perry would. It's so special for the fans to get to meet and mingle with their favorite theater stars right on the street. But what I found to be the most heartwarming was that so many of these stars, like James, were willing to share their experience and advice with aspiring performers and students. Joshua Turchin is a 15-year-old composer actor and recording artist who has been called a wunderkind by the New York Post. Joshua is also the creator and host of the Early Late Show series on the Broadway Podcast Network. He was working the Path Fund Rockers on Broadway table at the Broadway Flea Market. Here is what he had to share with other young artists hoping to break into the business. For other young people who are trying to break into the business, I would say one well, of my biggest pieces of advice is to keep doing what you love because as, so oh, as long as you do what you love to do, you will never work a day in your life. And I feel like that really hits home with uh, theater and performing and all things like that. This year's Broadway flea market and grand auction raised over $1,043,000, but the need for the organization's grants and services is ongoing. In fact, just today, Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS announced it sent a $250,000 grant to the people of Puerto Rico affected by Hurricane Fiona. That's just one of the reasons Lane Bocamp hopes fans will continue to support Broadway Cares all year long. We have a wealth of opportunities throughout the year to support Broadway Cares, not only through direct donations um, and uh, other fundraising events that we do um, when we're in red bucket season um, in the spring and fall. You can donate online to your favorite shows. And then certainly through our uh, Broadway Cares store, which is at, a, at our site at broadwaycares.org. 
Um, we have a wealth of great merchandise that are all themed around each season. Uh, new products are going to be available in October uh, for reflecting the most recent Broadway season. And then check out eBay too, because we have consistently on our in our eBay store signed one of a kind merchandise that we sell, and that goes up um, uh, throughout the entire year. Another way you can support Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS is to support Broadway veteran Lauren Kennedy as she prepares to run her first New York City Marathon. Lauren is the producing artistic director of Theater Raleigh and is running the marathon this November to raise money for Broadway Cares. She's set up a fundraising page through the Broadway Cares website. I'll put a link in the episode notes. At both this year's Broadway Flea Market and last year's event, a few people stopped me on the street to tell me how much this podcast means to them. It means the world to me to know that there are people out there listening and who care about the theater just as much as I do. So thank you for that. If you feel so moved, I'd also love to invite you to nominate Beltline to Broadway for Best Podcast in WRAL's Voters' Choice Awards. I'll put a link to the nomination page in the episode notes. If you like what you've heard today, please consider subscribing to this podcast. Follow us on social media, on Facebook or Instagram at Beltline to Broadway or Twitter at Beltline to B-Way or visit us online at BeltlineToBroadway.org. Until next time, I'll see you at the theater. Beltline to Broadway.